In this video, we are going to revise questions from biology paper one for the year 2017. Now here we have uh, questions 1 up to 40 and we have been given multiple choices and we have to be extra careful whenever we are dealing with these questions. So let's look at the question 1 here. Photosynthesis is a chemical reaction that takes place in a plant. Then which characteristics of living organisms is described by the statement above? So if we look at the photosynthesis, we are looking at the process. So the process by which plants, by which plants manufacture their own food. So we have the key point, plants manufacture their own food. And we know that whenever we look at the intake of food, we are looking at nutrition. So from these multiple choices, Photosynthesis, we have excretion. Excretion is getting rid of waste product. So getting rid of waste product. Then uh, locomotion, we are looking at movement from one position to another. Movement. Then nutrition here, we are looking at the feeding. So this is our answer. Photosynthesis has to do with the nutrition in plants. Then reproduction, we are looking at the process by which living organisms reproduce. Okay, so now let's move on to question two. Question two here, we have the diagram shows a compound microscope. Then we have these three structures that we are supposed to, to name. Then what are the labeled part one, two, and three? So the one is eyepiece. Then for the two we have objective lens. Then the third one we have a stage. So the multiple choice correct here is A. So now let's move on to question e, three. Question three. A raw potato strip was placed in a solution of different concentration. The length of the strip was measured regularly. The graph shows the length of the potato strip in solutions of different concentration. So here we are looking at the osmosis. At osmosis, we are looking at the movement of water from the region of high concentration to a region of lower concentration. So here we are looking at the question is, uh, in which period of time was the potato strip in distilled water? So whenever we place a potato uh, potato strip in a distilled water, we are saying a distilled water is a diluted solution. So here we are saying if the picture, if we're able to draw the picture, the cells that are in that potato strip will have hair concentration, let's say, of salt solution. Then here we are going to have a low concentration. We can just say this is just diluted, so there is no salt solution. So what this means is the water molecules will move from the distilled water into the uh, potato, the cells of the potato strip. Then from there, this potato strip will now become large in size. So if this becomes large in size, from these four multiple choices, A is showing us that the, since this line is going down, we can see that the length is reducing. So this is the loss of water. B, we can see that there is nothing that is happening here since it is like horizontal. Then for C, we can see that C, this line is going up, indicating that there is an increase in length. So the answer here is C. We can now move on to question e, 4. The diagram shows an enzyme catalyzed reaction. Then e, we have enzyme plus e, the substrate. The substrate we are looking at the food values or we are looking at the substances where the enzyme uh, works. Then we have the enzyme substrate com complex where these two have uh, become one. Then e, we can see that e, the structure of the enzyme is still the same. But here we can see that we have two products of the substrate. 
on the beginning of this reaction there was only one product so we can see that this one product which is in a large uh, molecule has broken into simpler molecules so now let's look at the question which of the following characteristics of enzyme <coughs> is being illustrated in the diagram so the enzyme is affected by the pH uh, no B denatured by the excess heat denatured uh, unless if the structure changed its structure so we can see that we still have the same structure then C protein in nature no then D we can see that uh, we have um, a specific shape here the shape that uh, this uh, substrate uh, was able to uh, fit in so we can now move on to question uh, 5 the diagram shows the results of three tests on a food sample. The first one, filter paper dried. Then we have translucent spot mark here. Then this one, Benedict, Benedict solution boiled, where we can see the red precipitate. So this one is showing us that after the test was done, there was this color of red. Then for the iodine solution, we can see that we have yellow color so let's make some interpretation before we go to the multiple choices whenever we see a translucent spot mark this shows that we have the presence of fats then if we have a red here red it shows that there is a high concentration of reducing sugar because whenever we look at uh, or test for uh, reducing sugar, there are a series of colors of changes uh, that changes uh, from uh, the Benedict has uh, the blue color. So there are some changes. Uh, we have uh, orange, we have uh, red. So now whenever we see the red, it indicates that there is uh, a higher concentration of uh, reducing sugar. Then if for this one, we can see that we only have uh, yellow. So yellow indicates that uh, no starch was present. If starch was present, the color would have been blue, black. So let's go to uh, the question. Which nutrients were present in the food sample? So we've uh, already seen that we have fats and reducing sugar only. So we have our answer be fats and reducing sugar only. Okay, so now let's move on to question 6. The table below shows some characteristics of four people. Which person requires the highest energy intake in his or her diet? Then you have the first column, age, second, sex, level of activity, body weight, per kg. So let's look at A, age, 5, sexy, male, then level of activity high so age five no so we can't have high level activity with someone of age five no that's not possible then b we have 20 male level of activity low then we have 85 weight per, per kg now let's look at c 40 the age is 40 then sex female level of activity high so the answer here is c because the age 40 a lot of energy is required sex female then the level of activity is high also the body mass here we can see that 82 kg is uh, an overweight somehow somehow so those uh, we require a lot of energy now let's move on to question seven which of the following correctly identifies the deficiency of diseases of the plant nutrients nitrogen magnesium and calcium so we are saying if uh, a plant is lacking uh, any of these what are the diseases and what are the characteristics that can be characterized by the deficiency of this so begin with uh, calcium so whenever we have uh, lack, lack of calcium calcium uh, calcium can cause chlorosis chlorosis is a condition where the uh, green color of the leaves uh, turns into maybe yellow or the other colors 
then for the nitrogeny we have standard growth now standard growth we are looking at where the growth is below normal so the answer here is a because the lack of magnesium definitely will cause chlorosis then lack of nitrogen this may lead to a death of roots now let's move on to question eight the diagram shows an experiment to demonstrate photosynthesis okay so have all the plant here pond water light water gas so what is the name of gas x so let's look at the equation for photosynthesis so for under photosynthesis we need to have uh, not glucose but we need to have carbon dioxide plus water then we have chlorophyll then sunlight then we are going to have glucose as our product plus oxygen so the gas that we are expecting to get after photosynthesis is oxygen so the answer here is oxygen okay so now let's move on to question nine so question nine here what do we call the type of heterotrophic nutrition where a tick is fixed to the skin of a dog and obtains its nutrients so the first one we have amenzalism so amenzalism we are looking at the kind of relationship where one organism kills the other so one organism kills the other so kills the other like for example we have like penicillin kills a bacteria a bacterium so that is a mensalism so kills the other so in this one one must be um, one must benefit but the other one must die then if you look at the commensalism commensalism we are looking at uh, it's a type of nutrition or we are looking at where the two benefits so two organism benefits so benefits but without uh, causing any harm or one organism benefits without uh, causing uh, harm then if you look at uh, mutualism mutualism here we are looking at both both organisms benefits so it's kind of a relationship where two organisms benefits then parasitism here we are looking at one organism benefits and and not only that not only that the other organism must maybe we can say uh, get sick so it's a, it's a kind of uh, a relationship or we can say nutrition where one organism will benefit more now because of that benefiting the host now will or may face uh, a problem after that so or the other thing that we can just look at here is the a tick is an example of parasitism so it is a parasite so let's move on to question 10 what is the dental formula for the animal whose cow is shown below okay so let's start this one so we can see that on top here we have three then below here we have two then we have this canine canine we only have one even below the lower jaw has one so we we can only use this to identify our answer since here we can see that we may have three three but let's look at the multiple choice which corresponds to the first one is this since we can see that each dental formula among these four multiple choices the canine is one one but the key here is the answer is cy because on top we can see we have three then on the lower jaw we have two then we can see so this is our answer now we move on to question 11 the diagram below shows the digestive system of a human being so if you look at digestion 
we are looking at the process by which uh, large molecules of food are broken down into smaller pieces for easy uh, absorption and also for the organism to assimilate. So if you look at uh, structure A, so structure A is the oesophagus. Oesophagus is the passage for uh, food. So the other name for oesophagus is the gullet. Don't confuse the oesophagus stroke or gullet to the windpipe. The windpipe is the passage for uh, air. So we have the windpipe, which is also known as the trachea. So this one has to do with the, the exchange of gases. Then our B, we have the stomach here. So we know that uh, after the digestion is done in the mouth, the the uncompleted digested food must move into the stomach where there is the digestion of proteins will commence. Then from there, there are so many things that happen in the stomach. Then for uh, C, we can see that C here we are looking at small intestines. So small intestines is where the completion of digestion is done and also the absorption. Then D, we have large intestines. Large intestines are responsible for absorption of water. Now let's look at the question. Which labeled part produces gastric juice? So gastric juice is produces, is I mean is produced in the stomach. So we move on to question 12. The diagram shows the respiratory organs in fish in which part of the rabbit parts will gaseous exchange take place. So we have uh, the mouth, then we have... Uh, so here the answer is uh, C, where we have uh, the gills. So this is where the exchange of air will occur. Now let's move on to question 13. Which of the following is the difference between aerobic and anaerobic respiration? A. Uh, aerobic respiration, carbon dioxide is produced. B. No carbon dioxide is produced. So this is the answer. Then let's check for B. Lactic acid is produced. Then under anaerobic, no alcohol is produced. This is a lie. C. More energy is released. Less energy is released. This also seems to be an answer. Then D, oxygen not used. Oxygen used. So between A and D, C, the best one is A. Then for question 14, which of the following diseases is pathogenic? So the word pathogenic is coming from the word pathogen. So what is a pathogen? A pathogen is any microorganism that has the ability to cause diseases. So from this, there are some of, we have two types of diseases. There are those that we call uh, transmitted and non-transmitted. So non-transmitted are those that cannot be transmitted. Then if we look at the transmitted, we are looking at those that can be transmitted. So from these four multiple choices, HIV is transmitted. All pathogenic uh, diseases are transmitted. They can be transmitted from one organism to another. Okay, so now let's move on to question 15. So question 15, the diagram shows cross-section of a dicot and dicot stem and root. Then if we are, so this P, is phloem, the outside is phloem, then this line here we have the cambium, then the Q is xylem. Then from this R is xylem, S is uh, phloem. Then let's look at the multiple choices, which labeled the regions contains xylem vessels. So the xylem vessel will have P and R. So P and R, not P, sorry, Q. Xylem is Q and R. So we have this one, our C. 
Then question 16 here. Peter has blood group AB. He needs a blood transfusion from which blood groups could he receive blood. So what you have to know about the blood group AB in terms of uh, uh, receiving or giving, AB can receive from any of the four blood groups. That's why AB is known as universal recipient. So since this person has this blood group uh, A, we will receive to all the four types of blood. So our answer is D. Because D, we have blood group A, B, and A, B, even O. So that is the answer there. Then we move on to question 17. The diagram shows the relationship between blood, lymph, and tissue uh, fluid. So whenever we look at uh, blood and lymph, we are looking at uh, the secretory system. The secretory system is made up of two systems. We have um, the cardiovascular system. and uh, cardiovascular system, we have structures like uh, the heart. Then we have blood. Then also we have blood vessels. So this is under cardiovascular system. Then the other system is the lymphatic system. Under lymphatic system, we have uh, structures like we have uh, lymph uh, vessel, we have uh, lymph nodes, and the function. Now, the main function of lymphatic system, it works as the drainage. It is like a drainage of the uh, body of uh, a human being. Now, after knowing these ideas, so let's look at uh, this structure. So we have blood flow, then we have P. P is showing us that uh, whatever substance P is moving from blood into the tissue. So what substance can be that? So this substance can be glucose because the cells need glucose for energy, also proteins. Proteins for growth and repair of cells, then the other thing is oxygen okay, or the key point is the substances that moves from blood into cells are those that we consider nutrients because they are needed by the body cells then what of q q q is giving us the arrow that these substances were moving uh, from the body cells into blood so this must be the waste products so since they are the waste products, these can be uh, urea, can be carbon dioxide, so anything that is considered to be unuseful. Then let's look at the fluid error. So fluid error, this is the plasma. Plasma, because plasma is the fluid part of blood. Then S, S this one can be a lymph. So the lymph will carry the uh, tissue fluid. Whenever a tissue fluid is found in the lymph vessel, it will be called lymph fluid. So let's look at now the answers here. So what are the substances labeled P, Q, R, and S? So the first one, P, P we have glucose, 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 protein. So it can be N of this. Let's go to Q. So Q, we can see that we have carbon dioxide, carbon dioxide. So Q cannot be oxygen. So we have only A or B. So let's look at A or B. Let's go to R. R is plasma. We can't say blood. Blood is a whole combination of the four elements. So it's plasma. Then our S is lymph. So the answer here is A. P is glucose. Q, carbon dioxide, waste product. R is plasma, fluid part of blood. S is the lymph from the lymphatic system. Then you have question 18. The diagram shows part of the nephron from a kidney. So we have the efferent arterial. So this is showing us the blood is coming. So this blood has the waste product that we want to be excreted by the uh, nephron. Then we have efferent, which is taking 
Alti blood. Okay, so here under the this structure, there is what we call malpigian body. Malpigian body. We are looking at the, the collection of the parts such as the Bowman's capsule and the glomerulus. Now under this malpigian body, this is where pressure filtration occurs. Pressure filtration. It is the type of filtration where some of the waste product that are in smaller sizes are forced out of the glomerulus into the Bowman's capsule. And whenever they reach into the Bowman's capsule, this is what we call glomerulus filtrate. Now, in this glomerulus filtrate, we have uh, useful substances and also unusual. Sometimes the substances like glucose may, may also be forced out. The only uh, substances that cannot found the in it, glomerular filtrates are proteins. Why? Proteins are bigger in size compared to the other waste products. Then let's look at the multiple choices. So A, we have presence of glucose, it's possible. Uh, presence of mineral ions, it's possible. Presence of proteins, no. Let's look at B, presence or absence of glucose, uh, mineral salt, C, mineral, I mean, mineral ions, no proteins urea then the best answer is d there is a chance of having glucose here there is a chance of having mineral ions here there is a there is no chance of seeing now proteins but urea must be there now why do we say glucose is there that's why we have what we call uh under the loop of henley there is the uh, uh convoluted the diastole and convoluted the proximal that is where selective reabsorption occurs. So selective reabsorption it is now the process by which some of the useful substances like glucose and mineral ions must be reabsorbed back into blood. So for that process to occur, there should be glucose in the filtrate. So that is our answer there. Now we move on to question e. Uh, 19 so under question 19 here we can see that we have uh, the diagram shows a section through the human skin then the question is how do the structures numbered one two and three help to regulate the body temperature on a hot day so we are looking at on a hot day so there are some changes that occurs when we are in like hot seasons so for that we need to since there is too much heat the body must make some changes so that there is a lot of uh, loss of heat to the environment why we are trying to reduce the, the or we are trying to maintain the temperature of the body so that the enzymes can keep on working perfectly now what happens? So there will be vasoconstriction. Vasoconstriction occurs if there is if there is I mean if it's cold. So here we are not going to have vasoconstriction. We are going to have vasodilate. So vasodilate we are looking at becoming big in size. So we can see it from the let's look at the first one. My choice produces less sweat no in a hot in a on a hot day we produce more sweat so a and b cannot be the answer now let's let's look at c or d c or d so one one we have one produce more sweat then two contract yes two contract then three must dilate so we have our answer d here then we move on to question 20 which hormone causes an increase in glucose concentration in the blood so for uh, glucose to be in a higher concentration in blood there should be let's say a need of uh, high energy because there is that of consumption now let's look at the multiple choices here. Adrenaline. Yes, this must be an answer because whenever adrenaline is produced, there should be uh, the heart the heart rate increases. 
Why? So that energy is Z transported to all parts of the body to prepare that person in uh, danger. Then for B, follicle stimulating hormone. This deals with uh, reproduction. So it deals with the reproduction uh, in terms of uh, ovulation and the like. Then insulin. Insulin converts excess, excess glucose into glycogen. So this one is the reverse. Instead of increasing glucose, this one reduces. Then oestrogen also has to do with the reproduction or secondary uh, growth in humans. So the answer is A here. Then we have uh, the diagram shows part of uh, the spinal reflex. So our form, we can see that this is the sensory. The sensory, then one we have uh, the synapse. The synapse is a junction between two neurons. So we have uh, the synapse. The synapse is also known as uh, a cleft. Then we have our two is relay. Then our three we have another synapse. Okay, now let's look at the question. So the question at which labeled parts is the neurotransmitter release? So neurotransmitter releasing of neurotransmitter occurs at the synapse at the junction. So the junction we have two junctions, label D1 and label D3. So 1 and 3 only. This is our answer here. So we move on to question 22. So question 22, the diagram shows a section through the eye. Which pair of structures focuses lie, uh, light rays onto the retina? So the retina... The function of the retina converts what we call photoreceptor. These are uh, cells that convert light into electrical impulses that uh, passes into this uh, optic nerve. So we know the optic nerve will now carry the information to the brain for interpretation. Then we have the parts like uh, the P is the cornea. Then we have our Q, which is the iris. So the iris controls the size of the pupil. Now the iris has to do with the, not the focusing of light but this one has to do with the amount of light where an individual is. Like if someone enters a room with dim light or in a dark room there are some changes that occurs to the pupil so that the pupil will uh, become bigger in size. If that person is moved uh, let's say where there is too much light, the opposite also happens. So Q has to do with the, the amount of light, not focusing. Then for R, R is the lens. So the lens has to do with the, the focusing. So the structures that are, that does the light rays onto the retina in terms of focusing, we have P and D, R. So we have answer uh, B. Okay, so now let's move on to question 23. So question 23, which of the following is a function of the synovial fluid on a joint? So synovial fluid has a function like to lubricate the joint to prevent friction, then also to provide, to provide nutrients. So these are some of the functions. So let's look at A, connection bone to bone at the joint. No, this is this is this is done by uh, a ligament. So the ligament does this. Then it connecting bone to uh, muscle at the joint. So here we have uh, tendon or insertion. So we have tendon does this. Tendon. Then preventing dislocation at the joint. So this is the, the function of ligament also. Then supplying nutrients to the cartridge at the joint. So our answer is D. 
Then question 24, which of the following distinguishes between a tropic response and the toxic response? So tropic response deals with the response of plants. Then under toxic, we have the response in animals. So under toxic, we have the movement of the whole body. Like an example for human beings. We human beings, we respond by toxic response. How? Let's take it for, for example, if maybe uh, it's hot outside, you may move from the area or position where it is hot to area where you think it's cold. So that movement from one position to another is what we call toxics. So this is where even the terms that we use like a taxi, the one that we, we hire, a taxi move means movement from one position to another position. So let's look at question A. Question A, toxic response. We have hormones are produced, then tropic hormones are not involved. No. B, response is by growing. No, toxic is not by growing. Then C, response is permanent. No, we it's not permanent. We move. We respond. If it's cold, we respond by wearing something hot so it's not permanent if it's hot we wear something that suits the, the time let's look at d whole organism moves this is true then the only part of organism moves so this is our answer then we can move on to 25 so 25 the diagram shows the section through the root meristem so z at Z, this is where the cell division is. Cell division, we are looking at a parent cell divides to form new daughter cells. Then here we have cell elongation. Cell elongation, it's a process where the cells that have underwent cell division now will grow big in size by absorbing water. Then under X, we have cell specialization cell specialization or cell differentiation now here is where now the cells become the specialized into a specific function so which of the labeled parts is the region of cell division cell elongation and this cell different we've answered this question so our x x is differentiation so which is our c y cell elongation z cell division so our answer is this one so we can move on to question 26 so question 26 here we can see that the diagram shows some bean uh, seeds that have been left to germinate for four days so the first one in x bean seeds on wet cotton wool so here we can see that the seeds are on top of wool. Um, uh, cotton that was it what then under y we can see that we have beans bean seeds covered with water so under in this one the seed will not germination too much water the seed will become dormant and also there will be lack of oxygen why oxygen is a necessity for germination to take place so let's look at the question why would seeds in Y not germinate? So this is because the seeds in Y cannot receive enough oxygen for respiration. Okay, so now we go to 27. So what type of asexual reproduction is illustrated in the diagram? So asexual reproduction is a type of reproduction that involves one parent to produce the offspring. Then here we can see Wavu. The key is amoeba. So what type of uh, asexual reproduction is found in amoeba? So we have uh, is C, binary. Because budding is done with uh, plants, then fragmentation, you no know, spore formation uh, like uh, rhizopus. So let's go to question 28. The diagram represents one of the methods of artificial propagation. So we have the first one, bud stick. So they removed a bud here. This is uh, the bud. Then we can say the bud is taken into a stalk. Then we can see here they have tied the stalk. So this bud will now connect with this plant. So which method of artificial propagation is shown? So this is budding because 
we have a bad here. We can see bad, bad patch. Then we can go to question 29. Which structure is not necessary in a wind pollinated flower? So anthers are necessary. The size of the anther matter, matters. Ovary, ovary, no. Petal, the size of the petal matters, stigma matters. So the answer is B. Let's go to 30. So 30, which of the following is correct about reproduction in frogs? So reproduction is in uh, frogs. Number one, it is external. If we say it, it is external, it, it occurs outside D, the body of an organism. So between multiple choice A or B, one will be the answer. Then uh, the eggs. Number of eggs that are laid are numerous. There are so many. But the one that, uh, that hatch in two younger ones are few. So in terms of the laying, they are many. The problem is with developing in two young ones. Then you care for the young. Yes, so the answer here is uh, N. And here we have what we call oviparacy type of uh, organ where the reproduction occurs outside the body. Then we go to third one. The diagram shows a developing fetus in the uterus. So we have like A, this is the placenta. Then uh, C, we have umbilical cord. The umbilical cord consists of umbilical vein and umbilical artery. Then we have the C, amniotic fluid, which prevents the uh, damage and also acts as cushion. Then D, we have the amnion, which acts as a membrane. So now, where does gaseous exchange between mother's and fetus blood occur? So it occurs at the placenta. So the answer is A. So we go to 32. Which of the following method is the least reliable in preventing pregnancy? So contraceptive, no. Diaphragm, no. Rhythm method, yes. So this type of uh, reproduction where couples do not have sex, before, during, and after ovulation. So here we are looking at uh, where a couple takes advantage of the those days they consider as safe days under the menstrual cycle. 33. A teacher made four statements about characteristics of a pupil. The first one, she has attached earlobes. Two, she's 167 centimeter tall. Three, she's light in comb. Uh, complexion uh, four she has body I mean blood group A so then which statements describes characteristics that show continuous variation so here height number one height is part of continuous variation then skin color which is complexion is also part of so the answer is two and D three which is C here so we go to 34 the following events take place in one of the stages in meiosis. The chromosomes arrive at the pores. The spindle fibers disappear. Chromosomes disappear by unwinding and become longer. The, nucle the nucleolus and the nuclear membrane reappear. So each state of meiosis is described in the statement. So as long as we have the nucleolus and the nuclear membrane reappear, this is it. Anaphase 1. Then 35. The diagram shows the inheritance of sickle cell anemia in a family. The allele for normal hemoglobin is represented by a capital letter H and the allele for defective hemoglobin by small letter H. Then which child is homozygous? So homo, we need same letter Z but recessive. So let's do this. Let's, we have this. We have this. So if we cross this one it will give us homozygous, homozygous, but for not recessive but for dominant. Then let's look at this one. This one we have capital letter H, small letter H. This is the heterozygous. Here we have heterozygous, so capital letter H, small letter H. Then here we have small letter H, another small letter H. So this is the homo. 
homozygous. They are the same. So we have two homozygous. This one and this one. Now, since there is recessive, recessive it means we need a small letter. We need where we have small letters. So where we have small letters, the answer is D. Then 36, the dichotomous key below was used to classify the organisms W, X, Y, and Z. One who has a cell go to two. So if it has a cell go to two, does not have a cell go to three. Okay, so let's look at the two. Cell is made of chitin, organism W. Cell is made of cellulose, organism X. Three has a cell membrane, has a cell membrane, organism Y. Then has a protein coat, organism Z. So which organism is a virus? So a virus has a protein coat. So it's Z. Then 37. The table below shows samples A, B, C, and D collected from different fields and their pH was tested. So 7, we can see that this is acidic. Then here we have neutral. Then C, basic. Even D, we can say more basic or more alkalinity. Then which soil sample could be improved by adding a lime? So we lime is considered to be a base. So we need to add a base to the soil what that we think or that we've measured to be acidic. So it is A. Then 38. The following is a sample of, I mean over, a simple of food chain. Then grass. This is the producer. Then we have primary consumer. Then secondary consumer. So what could cause the highest increase in rabbits? So for rabbits to increase, for this population to go up, this must reduce. Why? Since the egos, the egos were eating rabbits. So if they the egos reduces there is there are no organisms to feed the or to reduce the rabbits so the rabbits will go up then the other thing is this must go up so if the grasses increase and the egos reduces the population of rabbits will, will go up why the rabbits have so much food to eat but lesser uh, predators so what could cause the highest in decrease in rabbits so the first one a Less grass, no, this cannot be the answer. B, less grass, no. C, more grass and few egos. So this is our answer. So we go to 39. The table below shows the population of mice on a large farm over a period of five years. So year one up to five. Then what could have caused the change in the population size of mice between the fourth and fifth year? So fourth year, uh, the population was about 6,500. Fifth year, 500. So about, uh, we have a reduction of about 6,000. So what could cause this A, uh, immunity to disease? No, if there is immunity, then the population would have increased because the immunity is there to protect organisms. Then less pollution. Uh, no, this pollution is will is a positive in terms of increment of population. Then C more predators. So this is our answer. So there should have been more predators that were feeding on mice. The last question here, the diagram shows part of the water cycle. Then what process is represented by X condensation? No, because we can see that this is vapor going into the atmosphere respiration no translocation no transpiration yes because transpiration is defined as the loss of water vapor so this is how we can answer some of these questions so that's it for this video thanks for watching